in this corner. Front floating. Front floating's better than back floating because it's way cooler, man. And in this corner is back floating. Back floating's so much better to go first because it's better. And in this video, we're going to talk about which one of these two floating routines you should be doing first in your learn to swim routine and which one you actually want to delay until later on so that you can benefit the most and learn how to swim. Let's go. Now this is a really important video in your learn to swim process because we need to understand what our order of operations are in learning how to swim. Meaning, are we gonna start learning with front floating or do we wanna start learning with back floating? The two primary questions that we're gonna ask ourselves are, how much are we gonna use the skill? And then what's the actual swimming utility for you of that skill? The reason so many of our past clients have had incredible success is because we build their foundation on front floating. And think about it, it really makes sense, right? When you build a house, you don't build the upstairs first. In order to have a home that stands the test of time, we build a strong foundation. And the reason we want to be comfortable front floating is because that is our foundation. And that's why my argument is that we must learn front floating first so that we have that strong foundation. Dang, front float. That's a really good point. Now, the common argument for learning how to back float first and what most programs would try to sell you if you were to sign up for their Learn to Swim program is, well, we wanna learn back floating first for survival. And I think the answer really kind of falls apart when we stress test it. Let me tell you more. But I mean, if I ever fall in the water accidentally, I could just, I could just roll on my back and, and back float. It's a really important survival skill. And that's why back floating is better. Well, back float, well, I see the point you're trying to make. If you know how to swim, do you need to just roll onto your back and act like a helpless victim or just find the wall? Yeah, well, what if I fall off a boat? I'm gonna need to roll on my back and back float for a long time on help, just until someone's able to come save me. Well, I understand your concern. I highly advise that you never go boating alone, and that's the only situation that can occur. If you're around people who are responsible also for your safety, they'll circle back for you. Yeah, no, probably, probably, probably. I think they would do that for me. I think, I think they would do that for me. Would they do that for me? Look, you guys, it's not like we're trying to say back floating is bad, but what we're trying to tell you is that it is not a fundamental foundation for learning to swim. Most of the times, people are very uncomfortable on your back. So if that is one of the first skills your swim instructor is trying to teach you, understand that that is not the best way to go about the process. So let me share with you guys how we go about the learn to swim process so that if you're interested in learning the way that we do it here, well, you gotta leg up. It's really, really simple. The first and the foundation of how we learn how to swim is to gain comfort. That's first, second, third, fourth, and fifth on the order of importance. Comfort is what drives progress in the pool. Now, from that foundation, we learn how to put our face in the water. Seems like a pretty natural order of events. We learn how to get comfortable, then we learn how to put our face in. From there, it is a really easy process to then let go of the wall and begin front floating. Now, imagine if our order was, let's get comfortable first, let's learn how to put our face in, and then, well, after that, we're gonna go to learning how to be on our back, right? From a logical order of operations perspective, it just doesn't make sense. And then when we partner that, with the real life application, meaning how often we're actually going to use this respective skill, well, it leads, I have to admit, front floating to your answer. I want you to think back to when you were first learning how to drive. Could you imagine being told to just learn how to parallel park? Because one day you might need to, but that's 
all you learn? What about the other things you're gonna be doing 99.9% .9 of the time when you're driving? Learning how to back float is the equivalent to learning how to only parallel park when you're beginning to learn how to swim. Look, it's not like you're never going to parallel park or you're never going to float on your back. It's just not the foundation in which we learn how to swim. The best way to ensure your safety and survival in the pool is working on becoming the strongest, safest swimmer you can be. So once again, in our program, we go through getting comfortable, learning how to put our face in, learning how to front float, and then for propulsion, it's a logical order for learning how to swim. There is a time and a place to learn back floating and getting comfortable on our back float and all the things that are involved in that. It's just later in our learn to swim process. If you're interested in learning how to front float, make sure you check out the video in the description above.